Gilenor, the magical world of RuneScape. It's divided into chunks for easy use. Welcome to Chunkman Dead Die Kill, the series where I conquer the landmass of Gilenor by doing tasks and unlocking chunks. Last episode we completed 3 tasks to unlock 3 chunks. The first two tasks were completing the Jungle Potion quest and the Taibo one Eye Trio quest and the other task was completing the Medium Varrock Diary. Our map expanded with the Fossil Island chunk with the two birdhouses close to one another and then we had the Theater of Blood chunk and lastly the MacGruber Woods chunk. We'll start off today's episode with the quest which is now possible with that last chunk. The next quest we are able to do is Fishing Contest. We're here just above Caterby and at an entrance that seems to go through the White Wolf Mountain. We can also start the quest at the other side but this side is just more useful. So let's talk to the dwarf to see how to get in here. Vestri here says that the shortcut cannot be used by anyone they don't trust as we would just be strolling through their home and who would want that. To be friends with Vestri we need to get a gold artifact and it's being used as the first place prize in the Hemenster fishing contest, hence the name of the quest. We got a fishing pass to get into the fishing competition from Vestri, but they aren't really the best in fishing, so that's where we come in. Here we are at Hemenster, showing our pass we can get in here, and then if we talk to Bonzo we can start the competition. Here we can already see the trophy that we need to collect. And we only have one person as competition and that's the Sinister Stranger here. We've been assigned this spot to fish, so let's see. We don't have any bait. So that's why we needed the MacGruber's chunk. Let's first of all unlock it. And if we try to get in via the gate, we will be stopped as this is private land. So we'll have to go to the back entrance instead. There's some loose railing we can squeeze through to get into the woods. And there we have our bait a bit further on. There we go, that's some red vine worm. Let's take a few, just to be sure. So with our newest bait, we can start and fish some. And let's see who will find the biggest fish. We only got three raw sardines, so this is a really bad haul. So let's see what the sinister stranger got. And he won, okay. Not ideal, of course. If we look at him, he does seem like a vampire. And he probably has the best spots to fish from, so we have some garlic we can stash away in one of these pipes. That should hinder him enough so that we can win. So oh, let's try this again. He does not want to use that spot as there is garlic in the pipes of course. So we get that spot now. Let's find ourselves a big fish. Look at that, a raw giant carp. We even got two. That should be enough to win the contest. And yes, we won with that raw giant carp. We got the fishing trophy as a reward. Let's go back to the dwarves. Give them the trophy they wanted and then we can use the shortcut under White Wolf Mountain. And giving the trophy to the dwarf has ended the quest. A very short quest and we get one quest point for that. 2437 fishing experience. Very weird number. And the access to the White Wolf Mountain Tunnel. A short quest, but that was fishing contest completed. Let's get back to our spreadsheet completed over there and see which chunk we are going to get. Another quest down. We are completing a ton of them lately. This was the fishing contest. 
completed our 77th quest already and we are now up to 233 landmass chunks unlocked in total and then back to our map the last chunk we unlocked was the bottom middle chunk of fossil island which doesn't really change much as all the adjacent chunks were already unlockable or unlocked these are pretty much dead chunks anyway so let's hope we don't get any of those but let's see what we are going to get instead. Let's pick a chunk. Ooh, finally, we get the other part of Yanel. This part of Yanel actually has the most of the content in here. I think one of the most interesting now is that we have Nightmare Zone unlocked. We can only imbue our salve necklace at the moment, I think. But that would be great to imbue that one already. And I think, but I'm not 100% sure that we can now do hand in the sand quest. There's also some easy treasure trails here. So that will be helpful for the ones we get if we do, for example, some slayer or anything. But all in all, this is a chunk that we were waiting for a long time and it's finally unlocked. Next up, as we have just completed fishing contest, that now means we will be able to do the subquest for the dwarf from Recipe for Disaster. Let's inspect the dwarf to see which kind of food he needs to be freed from his spell here. Gypsy Aries here mentions that he is very fond of rock cakes and we should find his father within those tunnels we just unlocked below the White Wolf Mountain. We just talked to Rohak the dwarf's father but he's unwilling to give us the recipe to make the rock cake. He said he wouldn't even give us the recipe if we gave him all of the golden nectar from the rising sun. That did ring a bell as that's the name of the pub in Falador, so that's going to be our next stop. We paid one of the waitresses here and she gave us the secret ingredients to what they like in their beer. And that is an Asgardian ale with coins in it. Let's buy some of the Asgardian ales here. And then let's do the old trick of just getting someone drunk until they give us what we want. After giving a lot of Asgoldian Ale to Rohak, he still won't tell us the recipe. But if we bring him the ingredients, so the bowl of water, the pot of flour, the egg and the bucket of milk together with 100 coins, he will make one for us. And there's the Dwarven Rock Cake. He said there was a special ingredient. I'm going to guess that they will be rocks probably. But who knows. Anyway, this is extremely hot. So red and glowing only for Dwarf consumption. Let's go and cool it down. We don't have the ice gloves. We just have normal gloves. So let's just kill an ice fiend instead. That should do the trick. One ice fiend down and there we go. The rock cake is now just cool. Time to go back to the dwarf and give him the rock cake. One rock cake given to the mountain dwarf and that's the end of the subquest. We get one quest point, 1000 cooking experience, 1000 slayer experience. Not sure why we get slayer experience for this but okay. And the most important thing is that we now have more of the Colonel Romancer's chest. So let's go and get our new gloves. Our previous gloves were steel gloves. And our new gloves will be black. So let's buy one. And then let's see the difference. And it's a plus one just in every stat. So, a small upgrade, but every small thing matters. Anyway, with those new gloves obtained, that's the fourth subquest for the recipe for the disaster quest now done. Let's finish it on our spreadsheet and let's see what chunk is going to be next. 
Another fast quest down. That was another part of recipe for disaster. Freeing the mountain dwarf. If we complete this, this will be the 78 quest. Really getting close to halfway. And we are now up to 234 landmass chunks unlocked in total. And then back to our map. The last chunk we unlocked was the other part of Yanil, or the most part of Yanil anyway. And all the adjacent chunks were either unlocked or already unlockable, so this doesn't really change much. We've been getting a lot of good chunks lately. So let's see which was going to be the next. Will it be a dead chunk or will it give us more things to do? Let's pick a chunk. Ah, okay. That's the Chaos Altar in the Wilderness. Not really a place we want to go anytime soon. There is a hard clue step over here just behind it. And we need it for the Easy Diary for the Wilderness. But for the Easy Wilderness Diary we will also need the two chunks above it to get into the King Black Dragon Lair. So, not really a dead chunk, but that isn't really a bad thing currently, as we have a lot of things to do. Our next quest is going to be the Hand in the Sand, and for that we need to be in the other part of Yanel. But as we have already unlocked this chunk, and we will need it for the quest as well, Let's unlock it, there we go, and now we can get through to the quest start. Let's talk to Bert here to start the quest. Bert's job here it has something to do with the sand pit a bit further on, and he currently found a hand in the sand, hence the name of the quest. He doesn't really want to go to the authorities with the hand, as the head guard is a very big drunk. And then we come in then. So we have to figure out why this hand is stuck in this sand pit. First of all, let's go to the pub and let's see if the head guard can tell us anything. Like with every good drunk in the game, let's buy him a beer of course. After giving the beer to the captain here, he dropped the hand into his beer and was still drinking the beer so... That doesn't really sound like a very good beer, but anyway. He tells us that we probably have to talk with the wizards here, as it is all the wizards' fault, everything that happens here in Yanel. Normally, we would have to ring this bell, but as we have the magic level to get in here, we can just talk to the mage here, Zavistic Rarv. Zavistic Rarv says that the hand is probably from his student, Clarence. And he noticed that Bert was working very long hours, so maybe let's go talk to him again. Bert works for Sandy's Sand in Brimhaven. And he says his hours haven't been changed and he gave us his rota. So his hours he needs to perform for the amount he gets. Working from 6am to 10pm for only 50 gold pieces. Seems like they are exploiting poor old bird here. Anyway, let's go to Brimhaven and let's see if we can dig anything up over there. Sandy here isn't all that polite and really wants to get us out of his office. So let's have a look-see on what we can find here. So let's search this desk. And we found a rota, which are the hours of Bert, but they are from 9 to 6, and not like on Bert's rota, from 6 to 10. So there's something off here. Bert says that that cannot be that the rotas were different, and that a magic scroll turned up just a week ago when his hours would have changed according to the rota. So let's get this magic scroll back to Zavistic Rarv. The magical scroll we had and gave to Zavistic Rarv is apparently a mind-altering spell. So that's why Bert does not see 
the changes in the rota. And we got a magical orb. And if we go to Betty in Port Serum, she can make a true serum so we can interrogate Sandy. We need to make a lens for the truth serum, so if we add some red berries to this special bottled water and then some white berries, we have a pink dye and that pink dye can then be used on the lantern lens for the rose tinted lens. This rose tinted lens is one of the things we need to make the truth serum. So she put a vial on the counter and if we put the rose tinted glass inside the door here that should shine some light and we have some truth serum. And the last ingredient for the truth serum it needs something that belongs to the person we need to get the truth from. One pickpocket into Sandy's pockets and we get some sand. How appropriate. And that's the end of the truth serum. Now it should work. So let's get back to Sandy. Put it in his coffee or tea. And let's interrogate him about the dead wizard. There's a coffee mug next to him. But we cannot just pour it in while he sees it. So let's try to distract him. There we go. That's the truth serum in. And now we can activate the magical orb we got from the mage to start the interrogation. This is going to record everything so that the mage can look at our interrogation as well. The truth potion is working like a charm. Sandy bribed the wizard to put a spell on Bert so he would believe everything he says. And indeed he wanted to exploit Bert for working more hours and paying him less. And there we have it. Sandy killed the wizard he bribed. And instead of bribing him, he actually killed him and put him into the next load of sand. Which is why the hand ended up on Bert's part. Zavistic Rarf, after seeing the footage, is pretty angry, which is understandable. And he wants 5 earth runes and a bucket of sand for some reason, but he doesn't want to clarify. So, okay, let's give it to him. And there we have the sand pit of Bert. And it's being magically refilled. So, this means Bert will no longer have to fill the sand pit. Now we just need... The rest of Clarence's body. So the first sand pit we are going to look into is the one in Entrana. Talking to Mazion here, the keeper of the sand pit on Entrana. And he gave us the head of the wizard. And giving back the head to Zavistic Rarf is the end of the quest. The head made sure that it is actually Clarence, the wizard he knows. And he will make sure Sandy is being arrested for the crime. For completion of the quest, we get 1 quest point, 9000 crafting experience, 1000 thieving experience. Access to the rune store of the wizard guild, which is going to be really useful. And a secret reward from Bert. If we look at the magic guild store, they sell law runes, blood runes and soul runes. Which are all pretty difficult to get. So this is going to be a great shop to have unlocked. And then the other wizard has all of the mystic pieces. But I'm not sure if we actually miss any piece. I think we have all the pieces or maybe one piece we are missing. As we got a lot of the dark mystic from all of the slayer creatures we've killed. And then back to Bert, the secret reward after talking to him and saying that the pit now refills itself. He was worried that he lost a job but the wizards will be paying him a pension instead. But he really likes the sand and hauling sand. So as a special reward he will once a day carry 84 buckets of sand to our bank. So this is going to be 
great and very useful to do every day and will help with the crafting grind. So let's right click, sand bird and there we go. That's the first 84 buckets of sand in our bank. But anyway, we completed the hand in the sand quest, which is another task done and another chunk to pick. Our 79th quest, the hand in the sand is now completed. And that brings us up to 235 landmass chunks unlocked already. And then back to our map. The last chunk we unlocked was the Chaos Altar in the Wilderness. Which now gives us the possibility to unlock more of the Wilderness just above it. Or a piece of mountain which I think we cannot cross. So these wouldn't be the greatest unlocks. But let's see what we are going to get. The chunk picker decides for us. Let's pick a chunk. Okay, some water. Getting close to Litkren Island. But as it is a water chunk, let's try that again. Let's pick a chunk. And of course we get another piece of the wilderness. The last part of the lava maze. And we also get the King Black Dragon's Lair, but we don't have access to the gate. So for that we need the chunk next to it. All in all, not the worst chunk to get, but also not a very good one either. That's going to be all for this episode. Remember to give some love to the like and subscribe buttons below the video. We finished another 3 quests today and we are closing in on all of the quests which were possible after our good chunk luck. Next week we continue and probably finish our quest backlog. As always, have a great one and see you next week for more Chunkman progress.